I'd like to talk to you today about the humiliating great white throne judgment. A lot of people you try to talk to them about the Lord and they'll say, hey, don't judge me. Who are you to judge me? Well, let's, uh, let's go with that line of thinking for a minute here. Who am I to judge you? Well, my judgment doesn't mean anything to most people. But uh, the judgment that God brings on you, that's really what you need to think about. See, I can come and I can. you might deceive me and I might think that you're actually a pretty good person. But you're not going to deceive God. And someday, all of us are going to be judged by God. The saved, your judgment happens at the cross, at Calvary. You get saved, God judges you right there and says, okay. He imputes His righteousness to you. By His Holy Spirit, He helps you to clean up your life. Your life changes at that point in time. All right, Your works get judged at the judgment seat of Christ. But you, your judgment is over when you get saved, when you're born again. The lost, however, they are right. Um, I can say things about the lost people, and I can say whether they go to heaven or hell. Yeah, that's true, based on the scriptures. But ultimately, God will be their judge. And we're going to look at these scriptures today in the Bible. I'm going to show you what the Bible says about the judgment for the lost, when they die in their sin, uh, how God judges them. And uh, when you get right down to it, it's going to be humiliating. It's going to be very embarrassing. Um, essentially, you're going to be in front of everybody. Um, good chance that you will have nothing on. You will be naked. And your thoughts, even down to your very thoughts, are going to be judged and brought to light. The secret things that you've done that nobody else found out about, that nobody else knows about, they'll all be brought out. All of your works, all the things you've spoken, it's all going to be judged in front of all the host of heaven. You better think about that. Revelation chapter 20. We'll go through the scriptures now. Revelation chapter 20. And the point of me doing this study, you say, well, this, this just sounds so judgmental and think, I'm trying to get you out of it. All right, I'm trying to help you to realize this is what's coming, and then I'm going to tell you how to get out of it. Um, me personally, I don't want to go to the great white throne judgment. I'm glad I'm not going there. I'm saved. I'm born again. So I don't have to worry about these things that we're going to read here. Um, but this stuff here, if, if I had to go through this, I, it would scare me to death. It would be horrible. Revelation chapter 20, beginning in verse 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead... Small and great stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Isn't it interesting? You have lost people. They, oh, I'm not such a bad person. I've done this. I've done that. They think that they're going to be judged by their works. They're right. They're absolutely right. If you're lost, you will be judged according to how good a person you were. And you'll never make it. You have to be sinlessly perfect to get to heaven, so you'll never make it. So the works that you've done, you will be judged by those. Hmm, very interesting. Verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. All the people that have died uh, in the past, they're in hell right now. All right, death and hell there. But it, at the Great White Throne Judgment, they're brought up, they're resurrected, or not, I shouldn't say resurrected, but they're brought up to the Great White Throne Judgment, and then they get cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. Hell is sort of a temporary place right now until this point in time here, the Great White Throne Judgment. Then you go to the lake of fire forever. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hmm. Romans chapter 2. Go to the book of Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. I mean, are, do you really want your secrets to be judged? <clears throat> I mean, maybe you're just so holy and wonderful and, and you've never done anything really all that bad in secret. Maybe you're just the, the best person out there. Um, well, then you're better than me. I've done some really horrible things in secret. 
I wouldn't want those things coming out. God's psalm. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good, the Bible says. He saw what you did, and he's going to tell everybody about it. Humiliating. Terrible. Why would a loving God do that? Um, because you rejected his son. Because you rejected the way out. <clears throat> I mean, you know, house is burning and there's somebody inside and the firefighters come over and they, they break the door open and they say, come on out. The door's open, you're right in there, you're going to burn to death. The person doesn't come out. The firefighters are out there pleading with them, please come on out, the house is on fire, we can't put it out in time, you're going to die, come out of there. Would you get mad at the firefighters? Or would you say it was the person's fault? It was the person's fault. Well, I'm a firefighter. I'm trying to get you out of hell, you see. I'm trying to tell you, you better get out of the burning house, this world, your life of sin. You better get out of that. You better come to the door, Jesus Christ. John chapter 10 talks about that. Revelation chapter 4, John looks up and sees a door in heaven and he hears a voice. Okay, Jesus likens himself to a door. He's the way out, you see. I'm pointing you to him. I'm not pointing you to me. I'm not saying come to me and join my church and my system and give me 10% of your money. I'm not saying that. Not at all. You better come to Jesus Christ. And if you don't, your secrets are coming out. Somebody's in their house and the house is burning. They don't want to be on the news media. They don't want to be talked about. They don't want to be in the newspaper. But you know what? If they don't get out of the burning house, the news media is going to cover them doing what they did. And they're going to be in the newspaper as an obituary. Reporting on your death and whatever else. Come out of the house. It's burning. It's on fire. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Go back to Ecclesiastes. And again, this is a Bible-believing ministry here. I tell people to look in the Bible. Get a King James Bible um, paper-based uh, don't get an online thing and whatever else. Well, it's, I can just get it online and, and whatever. You can't trust the online stuff. People can change it easily. Go get a good King James Bible. They're not that expensive. You can go to a dollar store and get one for a dollar. Go to a used bookstore, probably get them for less than that. Greatest book that's ever been written in the history of man. You need one in your house. Everybody should have a King James Bible. If you're an English-speaking American or England or Canada or... Australia or wherever, English-speaking countries are, um, Ireland, Scotland, you mean, just go down through the list. You should have a King James Bible. You say, what about I don't speak English as my major, my main language? Okay, you sh should still have an Eng uh, English King James Bible. It's the greatest book that's ever been written. And that's why I encourage people, look up these verses. Make sure I'm telling you, telling you the truth. Um, Let me see here. I don't know if I wrote down my reference correctly here. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Yes. Chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, you see, you can't say, well, that's just Old Testament. The Old Testament people, they get their secrets judged. New Testament, not happening. Uh, well, that doesn't work because Romans chapter 2, verse 16 just said that God is going to judge every man's secrets by Jesus Christ. Your secrets are coming out. I mean, do you really want your secret life? Do you really want that being told before all of the host of heaven? I don't think so. Yeah, it's amazing when you think about it. As a Christian, I'm going to get to see every single celebrity, every great mind and every ruler and leader and pope and whatever else, I'm going to get to see them at the great white throne judgment. I'll be up there off to the right hand of the, of the Lord, over there to the right, all the saints and things, the redeemed saints, and I'm going to get to see every single celebrity come up and I'm going to get to hear every single dirty secret that they've ever done. And when that horror show is over, the Lord says, Depart from me, cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Matthew chapter 25 talks about it. 
I'll have no argument. Hey, Lord, what, Lord, now, come on. After I hear secrets of these lost people, after the saints hear the secrets of these lost people, there's no question. You all deserve hell. And I'll be thinking in my mind at that point in time, boy, I'm sure glad my secrets didn't come out. I'm sure glad, the, glad that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. I'm sure glad that His righteousness is imputed to me. I am sure glad about that. Wouldn't you like to have the same thing? Better think about it. Mark chapter 4. The book of Mark chapter 4. Can't turn all that great right now. My hands are a little cold. Mark chapter 4, verse 21 through 23. And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be uh, put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Again, another reference here in the books that are called the New Testament. Technically, the New Testament comes in after Jesus dies on the cross, but you know, so another this would actually be an Old Testament reference, even though it's in appears in the books called the New Testament. The Gospels are primarily Old Testament doctrine. But again, Hebrews chapter 9, you can read it. That's when the, the death of the testator brings in the New Testament. If you're not familiar with dispensational teaching, it's what the Bible teaches. If you're non-dispensational, then you're not saved. You don't understand the Scriptures. Because if, you know, if you're non-dispensational, then your gospel is going to be mixed up because you say it's the same gospel throughout all the Bible, and it most certainly is not. But again, your secrets are coming out. There's nothing that you've hidden that shall not come out. I mean, that should scare you. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. And I've heard, you know, professing Christians and they'll say, um, well, you know, the great white throne judgment, we'll all appear at the great white throne judgment. No, we won't. The great white throne judgment is for the lost. You have to get the difference. The judgment seat of Christ for the saved, great white throne judgment for the lost. Very important distinction there. My secrets are not coming out. Right? John chapter 12, verse 48. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Right there. It's not oral tradition like a lot of the cults out there and, and things and the writings of man and, and whatever else. I mean, if you think that this book was written by men, I feel really bad for you. Uh, man could not have written this book and uh, in terms of just out of his own mind. I mean, this thing took thousands of years to write. And there are scriptures that tie in from the Old Testament to the New Testament. I've been showing them to you. Hundreds and thousands of years between these two, and yet they're lining up. And the books are compiled later on by the body of Christ. Don't know, it's the Catholic Church. No, they added books to it and things, and they add traditions and whatever else. No, it's not the Catholic Church. There were early Christians around that had the entire canon of Scripture figured out before the Catholics ever showed up. All right, don't believe that's another one of the lies of the Catholic Church. But this book spans thousands of years of time, and yet they're writing things that line up. And there's prophecies saying what's going to happen in the future. The Bible says we've been given a more sure word of prophecy. You, there's just no way that this thing was written just by men and they, oh, it's just kind of a, you know, ignorant sheep herders or something like this, shepherds and, and, and fishermen and whatever. Uh, that's the stupid atheists that come out with that kind of things. The fools out there that say that there is no God. Um, and then they turn right around and believe in something as idiotic as evolution theory. Everybody, everything came from nothing accidentally and then it, you know, rained on the rocks and and electrified through lightning and it turned into people or something like this and, and we're, we're getting better and better. Uh, you have to be a fool to believe in evolution. Okay, the entire thing of it there. So, yeah. But let's continue here. Hebrews chapter 4. You say, what about this thing of God's word judging? 
okay, you showed us only one place. You know, again, the, the Catholics will come out and they'll say, where does the Bible say sola scriptura? Huh? You know, only the scriptures, only the scriptures. Well, first and foremost, it's just logical. If this book is really God's word, then what do you need else besides this? Well, the church fathers say this and that. Do the church fathers contradict this book? Well, yes. Well, then you scrap the church fathers. Well, my church has a catechism. My church has a book of discipline. and My church has this and that and whatever else. Does it contradict the book? Does it contradict the sacred scriptures? Yes. Well, then it's not real. It's not true. It's the words of men. I mean, duh. Sola Scriptura is not some kind of a holy, oh, wow, the thing that you have to just have it revealed to you. It's just common sense. It's not that difficult. But the whole point is, Jesus did not say, hey, in the last days, my words and your words and the Pope's words and the priest's words and everything, they'll all kind of mix together and judge you. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge them in the last day. Here's another one. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is ma not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. And it's talking about the written word there. It's not a capital W, the manifest word being Jesus Christ. So this book has a Holy Spirit that's there every time you read it. It's very interesting. I heard a... a older preachers say the one time he said the Bible is the only book that has the author present every time you open it when you're saved yeah and if you're looking for the truth the Holy Spirit will show you things out of this book he'll show you what you need to do to get saved if you really are interested but very interesting here you have a book that's going to judge you in the last day and you know well I, I don't want anything to do with Christianity well what define Christianity because most people, the way that they define Christianity, that definition doesn't even appear in here. You say, I don't want to be a Catholic. Good for you. There are no Catholics in here. I don't want to be an independent fundamental Baptist. Good for you. They're not in here either with their church buildings and their Sunday best and suit and tie and 10% tithe and one man pastor up there putting on a show and whatever. And It's not in here. Show it to me. It's not there. Make sure that you're not rejecting this book because of rejecting some kind of Christian cult type of thing out there. Most people are rejecting the, the hypocrites out there and they say it's this, it's this book that I reject. You're a fool if you think that way. This book is going to judge you. Romans chapter 3 Romans chapter 3 You know, and it said there in Hebrews chapter 4 too, you know, 4 as well, that uh, all things are naked and open unto him, unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So what if when you're judged, and I can't teach this dogmatically, but what if when you're judged, you're just standing there naked in front of everybody? Talk about humiliation. Talk about shame. You know, it's ironic because Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, he was naked. And he was beaten and he was humiliated. So your choice is basically very simple. Take the humiliation of Jesus Christ on the cross dying for your sins. Or you do your own thing. You get the humiliation. You get your secrets brought out. You get judged by your works. And you stand there naked. Romans chapter 3 verse 19 through 25. Now we know that whatso, what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. It cracks me up too. I've seen, I've seen lost people and they'll say, oh, I'm just going to laugh at God and I'll tell God. I'll... You're not going to say a thing. I don't care how, how brilliant somebody thinks that they are or how tough that they think they are. They're going to be quiet when they're standing there being humiliated by God. Verse 20, Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, of, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Forbearance is kind of interesting because you have a lot of people right now that say, I have, to, I have to put my home in forbearance. Why? Because I can't pay my payments. I have a mortgage, a death pledge that's on me. Did you know that that's what mortgage means? If you haven't seen some of my other videos, mortgage, mortgage, there is a death pledge. You have a death pledge on your life, friend. You do. You say, well, I can't pay. You're in forbearance. I can't pay. Somebody else paid it for you. Wouldn't it be nice if you had this forbearance situation, you can't pay for your home and whatever else, you're going to lose it? You're going to lose what you have worked so hard for? Hmm, interesting. Uh, your home. The Bible talks about your body being the temple of the Holy Ghost. Another interesting tie in there. And you're in forbearance. And all of a sudden somebody comes along and they say, I'll pay the whole debt. Not just your, your mortgage payments. I'll pay the house off. I'll purchase that house. And you can live there. I'll let you live there. Rent free, debt free, whatever else. I'll purchase it. Would you take them up on that? Or would you in your pride say, No, it's good. I got it. I'm fine. Like most people do. It's exactly what most lost people do. I'm good. I'm good. I, don't cram your religion down my throat. I don't need to have it. I think that I'm going to be fine. I've never killed anybody. I've never robbed banks and things. So I'm going to be good. I'm good. I have, I have some special road in with God that you don't know about, preacher. How many times I've been told that? Literally to my face. I, I, you know, I, I think I know some things. I know, I know a, few, a few things. You and your Bible can just go away. I'm not going to be judged by you and your book there. I have some inroads with God, you know. He's, he's my boy, you know. Big man upstairs. Yeah, he's got my back, man. Yeah, you're going to find out. You'll find out. And you'll die and you'll go to hell. Because you had your own self-righteousness. Your own self-righteous pride. You're in forbearance, friend. You're not making it. God can pay for everything. Romans chapter 14 Romans chapter 14, verse 11 through 12. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You know, one of the things about YouTube is you can come here and you can watch this video. I don't know what you look like. I don't know how you're dressed. I don't know how you smell. I don't know how you, the sound of your voice. I don't, I don't know anything. And um, you say, what's the point? Uh, well, if you came to my church someplace, if I had a church building, uh, you come in there, well, you might have to deal with me face to face. You might have to stand before me and I can judge certain things and whatever else. Smell the cigarettes on your breath or the alcohol on you and in your breath and everything else or the marijuana smoke or, or whatever. I can judge the way you, that you look or the judge this, judge that. Here on YouTube... You're watching this in the privacy of your home or on your phone or on some other kind of a thing at the library or wherever. Um, you say, what's your point? The point is uh, you're going to be judged by God and that's really what you need to think about. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You have a unique opportunity right now to get saved right where you are. You don't have to come here and be judged by me. Um, you don't have to come and pour out your heart to me and say, I, uh, I need to confess all my sins, Father Brian. Get into the confessional booth and say, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned, you know, and whatever else. And then I'll tell you what you have to do to help our church grow. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You need to get right with God. You need to get right with God. Unless you want your secrets to come out. Unless you have some kind of death wish that you want to stand before God someday and give an account of yourself. And have it just be there and, and, and God saying, okay, you, step forward. Says your name. Come forward. There's all these people. And you walk forward. And if the Bible's right, if the you know, one verse in Hebrews there is correct, you walk forward and you don't have a, a bit of clothing on. 
And you walk forward and the Lord says, okay, open the books. It's time to judge them. Here's what they've done. Here's what they've thought. Here's the secret things you did as a child, as a teenager, as a young man, a young woman, whatever. The whole way through your life. And when that nightmare record has been read, God looks at you and he says, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Or you can get saved right now. Or you confess Jesus Christ right now. You believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins. You understand that you're a sinner. Get down on your knees someplace and you say, God, I am a wicked sinner. You know, you know the secrets I've done. I don't want those secrets coming out in front of everybody. I don't ever want to end up at that great white throne judgment. God, please save me. Come to him as a sinner. And understand when he saves you, he controls your life. He pays off that uh, forbearance, your mortgage, your death pledge. And then he says, okay, I own you now. You say, oh, that's just terrible. He owns you and he's going to do nice things for you. Again, go back to the house analogy. This guy comes along and he says, I'm not only going to pay off your house, I'm going to fix your house up. I'm going to make your house beautiful like you've never seen before. Who wouldn't want that? And yet the vast majority of people reject Jesus Christ. They're living in some dump, leak in the roof, the walls are rotting, the foundation is off level, the whole place is about ready to fall in, and some guy comes along, some wealthy man comes along and he says, I'll buy the whole thing and fix it up. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Take your you know, money elsewhere, buddy. I'm good, I like my house the way it is, okay? Yeah, I owe all kinds of money on this thing and I'm pretty much going to be on the street soon, but I'm good, you know? I, I pay my own bills, I make my own way. Well, you'll find out. But if you're desperate and you understand that you are in a very rough state and you've done some really wicked things, you don't need to tell anybody about it but God. He already knows. He already knows what you've done. So why waste your time trying to hide from God? There's no place that you can hide from Him. Broken, sinner, contrite. I've messed up, God. I've sinned against you, ultimately. I'm on your earth, I'm breathing your air, I'm eating food that was grown here on this earth that belongs to you, I'm wearing clothing that belongs to you, came from the animals and things and whatever else, plant fibers and whatever, it's all God's, it all belongs to God. Confess him now, friend, don't wait till eternity to have to confess him before he casts you into the lake of fire forever. I pray you take heed to this little message here and um, don't do what I say. Go get a King James Bible and read it for yourself. Um, don't be convinced, well, I have to become a Denlinger writer or something. Please. Um, get the Bible and read it for yourself. Okay, I say, don't do what I say and I tell you to go get a Bible. Understand what I'm saying here. Okay, get a Bible and read it for yourself is all I'm trying to say. Don't go to church someplace. Don't try to clean up your life before you get saved. Just come to God as you are, a wicked sinner that needs to be saved. All right? So that's going to be it. I pray you take heed to this little sermon here and uh, that you get saved. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.